Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to episode two of my podcast, which is a podcast where we share recipes. And I am so thrilled to be joining all of you today with something that's my favorite utensil to use in the kitchen, crock pot. So I had to name this episode crock pot fun (laughs) because why not? Because it's fun. Um, crock pot meals are so easy and fun for me. You just dump them and go and they slow cook all day. Now I tried to get into the, um, the pressure cooker scene, pressure cooker, pressure cooker. There we go. It's a tongue twister for me. I'm sorry. (laughs) No, I never took speech as a, as a child, but I get very tongue twisted very easily. Um, so I tried to get into that side of things. I I bought a pressure cooker. It was on a clearance at Walmart and I was so excited to try it because I thought, well, maybe this will be even more easier because you just put in the ingredients when you want to make your meal and then it just cooks it really fast. Well, I didn't do my research on (laughs) the pressure cookers before I went and bought one. And so I got it. And I was thinking, how do I use this? What's this for? You know, trying to figure out what everything was. Um, And and then I realized it wasn't for me. Um, It really scared me to know that it uses so much pressure that it can be dangerous. (laughs) So it was not my um, cup of tea by any means. Um, I was very scared to even try to use it. So I went to Walmart and I exchanged it. Because I explained to him, hey, I got this on on clearance, and it was a really big one, too, and I was so excited. It was like, it's a six quart. And I told him, you know, I just explained the situation, and I said, you know, I don't think I can use this. I was doing my research on it too late. It looks really, I don't know, scary to use, I guess. And so I'm like, well, let's just uh, not get that. And but she totally understood. She was so nice. And I said, well, I just I'm a slow cooker cooker kind of gal and I just want a crock pot. (laughs) Can I just exchange this? And she was super nice about it. And so I got a slow cooker and I got that. What last year? I think it was because our crock pot lid broke. That's how I got in that situation. And (laughs) I thought, well, let's just get like a new crock pot. That's what I was going for, you know. But then I went through the clearance and I'm like, what is this? You know, I thought, well, maybe we should transfer to this, you know, but I was completely wrong. Um, Most people that I've heard from, from pressure cookers, is that the women never like cooking in them. It's their husbands that do. Um, It just scares me as much pressure as in the machine. It could like explode and I don't like that. So I was very scared to try it. But most people say their husbands do the cooking in the, in the pressure cooker, which I could see why now. But I just wanted to share my little story of thinking I could do something else. But no, I I found out on that day that I'm sticking with the crock pot, um, also known as a slow cooker. And that's what I'm going to do. And then the lady that helped me returned it said, I'm a slow cooker girl too. And I love putting it in and it just slow cooks all day and your house smells so good. And I said, yeah, I think I am too. I think I realized that today. I always knew I loved them, but now I'm for sure I'm a crock pot person. So this is what this episode's all about. I'm going to share three um, crock pot recipes that I found in this um, cookbook. It's on the back section. Um, And I thought, well, some of these are kind of unique and I've never heard of them before. And so here I am sharing. Um, There is one that I've never thought of that people might have already thought of and use all the time. But there was this uh, roast. We always love roast at fall time this time of year. And it was uh, made with pop. And so I had to share that. Um, That'll be the second one I go to. But um, the first one I'm going to share is a minute steak one, which is, uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, That last episode that we did was all about that. I already know, but, um, this is the last one I think that I have on this episode anyway, that is with minute steaks. So 
If you're not a big minute steak fan, I completely understand it. I'm picky too, and I get your pain. <laughs> so it's called steak and gravy. And this would be like perfect to make for like a holiday or like um, a small get together or something. Now, if you have a bigger family, you might have to double it, but it seems like it would be a perfect kind of uh, maybe a side dish or just the main course for something like that. I personally think would be good to cook this for. So you need two pounds of minute steaks, two cans of golden mushroom soup, one garlic clove minced, salt and pepper to taste. Your brown steaks you place in crock pot. Pour soup over steaks, add garlic, cook until tender on low at least for four hours. And it said down here as a tip, whoever put this recipe in here, put the just put a tip in parentheses, said, this is why I use minute steak, because it's so tender. And, um, you know, it's so tender, you could just cut it with a fork. And so that's why I think it's saying just low for four hours, because minute steak must be a kind of a steak that's more tender in general. And so you don't need much time to cook it. So that's kind of nice. That's probably why it's in this recipe. Now you could use whatever, but if you use like a tougher cut of meat, you might want to put it on high for longer or whatever, low for longer if you're leaving the house. But if you're staying in the home and you're doing something like cleaning or eat your day off, you put it on high for longer. But um, that's why that's why this recipe says minute steaks. I found that out with a tip down below. <laughs> so I thought I'd share. So I'm not really a big fan of can of mushroom or I mean cream of mushroom. But this one is cans of golden mushroom soup. So it's like a soup. So it's like a little different than it must have like the bigger pieces of the mushroom. To me, that's what it means. I don't I don't know. It doesn't say cream of mushroom. So it must just be a little different. Has anybody used this in a recipe other than cream of mushroom, like substituted it? Because I've never heard of it. But it must be like more of like a mushroom piece in it. Not for me, but mushroom lovers, there you go. So um, I will repeat it one more time. And then we're going to move on to the one that I was talking about with the, um, the pot roast that was made with pop, which I've never heard of before. And I think I'm going to try. I don't like pop personally to drink, but if it goes into maybe the crock pot and flavors something, I might be okay with it. Um, so for steak and gravy, that's what it's called. And you need two pounds of minute steaks, two cans of golden mushroom soup, one garlic clove minced, and salt and pepper. So it's just like four ingredients. Or not really even four, just three, right? Because salt and pepper is just like seasoning. Um, and then you brown the steaks a little bit, I guess. Some of the meat, you must have to do that. Because some recipes that I do, you have to brown the hamburger first. I personally like to do that with hamburger because the hamburger doesn't cook in the crock pot as well. So it says brown steaks placed in crock pot, pour soup over steaks and add garlic. Cook until tender on low at least for four hours. So it's just a real easy and maybe even cheap for these days, you know, cheap meal that you can just put in and it's done for whatever you're doing. Holidays, get together. So that's a really easy one, guys. So that one's that one. Okay, so if you like pot roasts like we do, this one's super interesting to me. Now I'll have to know down below if you've tried the pop in a, a roast yet. But this one calls for Coca-Cola. Coke or Pepsi, whatever you prefer. Now, to me, when I drank pop a little bit, I personally liked Coke better. But everybody has their own opinions on that. So. But for me, I'd personally pick the Coke. So here we go. It's called Crock-Pot Coke Roast. So you need one, two to three pound roast. That's a lot. It must make a little more. <laughs> one can of Coke or Pepsi. So you only put one can in. It must not be too bad. It must just be for tenderizing the meat and adding flavor. One packet of dry onion soup and one can. Now you can pick. It gives you a choice. I've never tried the cream of celery, but it says 
one can of either cream of celery or mushroom or chicken soup. I guess it gives you the chicken option too. Um, I think I know which one I would pick. <laughs> but that sounds kind of weird in a roast, right? Like cream of chicken with like, I don't know. I don't know what I feel about that. But if anybody's tried something like this, let me know the reviews of it or what it was like. But that would be kind of weird. But I guess I would pick the chicken. If I kind of knew more about the cream of celery, I think I would pick that first. Let me know what you pick. So you mix last three ingredients together and pour over meat in crock pot. Turn on low before work. It will be ready when you come home from work. For something extra, boil some potatoes and use the soup mix over them. So obviously that one was a little, but that's the point of this episode, right? Quick, easy, cheap crock pot meals. And so that's what it's about. (laughs) So we've got one more. And um, I have to turn the page, so if you hear anything, it's me. Um, so it's a crockpot pizza. Now, I've never heard of this before, um, but it must be without the bread or something. I've heard of, like, casseroles where you don't put the bread in, like, the crust for the pizza, and it's just the meat and cheese and sauce. That's what this looks like to me. So it just bubbles up, and you have no carbs, no bread. It's just like a toppings of the pizza so this is what it looks like it is you can customize this however you prefer what you prefer on your pizza that's what this one is though so it's it's going to start with one pound of hamburger and then it says one 32 ounce jar of spaghetti sauce one pound of pasta spaghetti lasagna etc so you could like pick the thickness of noodle or the kind of noodle that you prefer in your dishes. One eight ounce package of mozzarella cheese. Parmesan cheese. It does not have a measurement for that. So if you don't like Parmesan cheese, you probably don't have to put it in there. But if you do, it does not have a measurement. So you can put however much you want in there. I would have done that anyway because I love Parmesan cheese. But just to add that in there. And then it says pepperoni, Canadian bacon, or pizza topping of choice. Now, that that really does sound good if you put both of them in there. I really, really like Canadian bacon. So I think that both would complement each other well. So you brown the hamburger, cook the noodles according to package directions, layer ingredients in crock pot, cook on low for four hours. So it sounds like you just... That's kind of nice because with noodles, they cook weird in the crock pot sometimes because they just do their noodles. So it's kind of nice that you cook them beforehand so you know that they're cooked. Um, And then you put the hamburger in first, the noodles, and then you layer all the other toppings that you wanted, like hamburger, Canadian bacon, um, pepperoni. And even if you're a vegetarian, you can make it a vegetarian one. And you can just put whatever you want in here. And it sounds really good. Now, I am wrong. I will correct myself. I said at the beginning, I thought it was like a, like the other casseroles I've seen with the pizza. I thought it was with no carbs. And it was more of like keto friendly. That's what they say, I guess. I used to do keto, guys. It did help me. But I I read some bad reviews on the keto. So I quit doing it. But um, with that, you're supposed to like, eliminate all the carbs and so I thought this was it but the pasta is in it so it's kind of like the same amount of carbs or probably more (laughs) because um noodles are kind of more carby but it does sound super good now if you're more on a diet maybe you could use like a vegetable based pasta you know if you prefer that and that would be good too I really like the zucchini pastas and the lentil pastas. The lentils, like a bean one, is really good. I've had the frozen, now I don't know if this really, yeah, it had lentils in it. It was green giant, I think, and it was like, it's like a cheesy panini pasta. It's like in a cheese sauce, and it's in a frozen bag, and you put it in the microwave, and it just cooks in the bag like the vegetables do, but it says the noodles are made from zucchini and lentil. And I think when I looked it up, you could correct me if you know more than I do, because <laughs> I'm sure many people already know. 
but I think lentils a kind of bean that's healthier for you. I'm not really sure. I don't know much on the lentil, but there's spaghetti noodles that they've made or like a whole line of uh, what brand is that? Varela? Is that how you say the noodles in the in the blue box? Um, I think they have like a um, lentil based. Uh, it used to be like plus omega threes, and it would say um, plus protein. Now I think it says just plus protein. I'm not really sure, but it's based off lentil beans, and they have spaghetti noodles in it, angel hair, panini. I know that's not the right way to say it. I know I'm I'm saying it wrong for the Italian friends out there. Please, please nicely correct how I say it because I'm not really sure if I'm saying it right. I always say things wrong and I will be the first to admit it. But they have that style and they have like a, uh, um, I don't think they have elbow, but they have, what's that other style of macaroni? Um, Gosh, I can't think of it now. But those are healthy, and I buy that because my kids love spaghetti, and they get nutrition with it, too. It's plus the protein, and so that's what I get. Um, It is a little bit more expensive, but it's healthy. So those are your options. If you're still on a diet and you want to try this recipe, you could do it like that. So I will read it one more time, and then we're done today with recipes. <laughs> Um, next time I'll give you a little hint on what it is. Um, just think of cheese. That's the hint you're getting for next time. Um, gooey, gooey cheese, liquid cheese, Velveeta cheese. It could be anything. It's just cheese is the theme. So you'll, you'll know more next time. Okay. Crock pot pizza. One pound of hamburger. One 32-ounce jar of spaghetti sauce. One pound of pasta. Your choice. One 8-ounce package of mozzarella cheese. Parmesan cheese. And pepperoni, Canadian bacon, or pizza topping of your choice. Could be anything. Brown hamburger. Cook noodles according to package directions. Layer ingredients and crock pot. Cook on low for four hours. So that is that recipe. You know... I just have so many ideas with that one. I'll have to play around with that one. Um, also, I would like to know everybody's opinion on crockpot liners. I know a lot of people have mixed feelings on them, but drum roll, please. I use them, and I'm not having any shame about it because it is way easier cleaning for me as a mom of two. I'm very busy, and I don't have time to scrub out a dry stained crock pot because if you let that stuff like sit in the crock pot too long it burns on the ends and I hate scrubbing it so I use them I get them every year and I put them in and I take them out when I'm done and it's so easy now I know a lot of people are saying oh they're not healthy and they have this and this and um I just don't see I don't know the truth in it I guess so I'm on the side where I use them and I don't care <laughs> so um they can't be that bad for you. They're um, BPA, however you say it. It's free of it, so um, I'm using them. <laughs> but I would like to hear your opinions. Do not down me for my choice. I'm not downing you for yours. If you like not using them, that's fine. Everybody has their own way, and I'm not going to judge you for that. But please, please, please don't be mean to me about it. But I would like to hear your thoughts down below because, you know, social medias can get really mean to each other on there all the time. So please be nice. So that was the crock pot um, episode. Now, I need to know something else because I'm just curious. And I love talking to people and hearing their opinions. What's your favorite brand of a crock pot? Or does it matter? I really wanted to try that um, Pioneer Woman one. It was on, uh, I think it was on Clarence at my Walmart. I'm not really sure. But it was like blue and it had the flat floral um, decoration that she has on all her stuff. And it was so cute. And it was digital. They're not, you know, all the newer ones are not the turn. They're all digital. So when I got my new one, when I exchanged it, if you missed the story, it's at the beginning. <laughs> but when I exchanged it, mine was digital and it was Hamilton Beach. 
And I thought, how do you do the digital? Is it way different? Well, no. You just push power and you put what, you know, high-low. It still has the high-low and warm. And you just, um, then it has, like, mine has the hours down below where you just push the button and it has, like, two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. I think it goes up to twelve hours. And you just push that button to the light of the hours you want. And so I had to get kind of used to that because my older one was just the turn button. You know, you just turned it. <laughs> um, there is some that still have that, but I had to get used to the digital, which was very hard for me. But it was easier than I thought it would be. But I really like my my new crock pot. Um, but I just wondered if anybody had like a certain brand they liked better. Um, the crock pot brand crock pot is what we had last time. It was a very reliable crock pot. We had that one for like, <laughs> I can't even count how many years. Um, Probably close to 10. But I'm hoping this Hamilton Beach one lasts us for another 10 years or more because <laughs> I love it. It's also a crock pot that you can take on the go, which I really like that feature about it. It has the lid where you can, um, of course, don't do it while it's cooking because I learned my lesson the hard way. <laughs> now, I can't be the only one that's done that. but. It has the lid where you can put it down with the hinges and you take it to go, which is really nice because one year for Christmas, I cooked the main course, the beef and noodles in a crock pot and I could put the sides down and it was so nice. But um, so that's a really nice feature that I like on the crock pot that if I ever had to get another one anytime soon, which I hope not, I do not want to have to buy another one. But if I did... Those are the features that I would look for again. I really like them. I really wanted to try that Pioneer Woman one, but I didn't. Didn't get a chance. They all sold out. <laughs> but it was digital like this one. So I picked the next best thing. So I hope you enjoyed this Crock-Pot um, episode, Crock-Pot Fun. And I hope you had fun with me today listening to me babble on about my story in the beginning. It was just something else. I should have done my research. I'll do that more next time. Um, before you buy something thinking you're going to be into it, I have learned the hard way. I really have. I'm sure everybody has done that before. I was just so excited because it's like, you can put this pasta dish in and it'll be done in like 20 minutes. And I'm thinking, that sounds amazing. So you don't even have to cook the noodles. Like, what do you, what do, you do? Like, I was so thrilled. But then I just got to looking on it. I'm thinking all these like steps or like precautions you got to take with all the pressure that's got to be in this one pan to do that so fast. Man, I just didn't know if I could do it. So I returned it. <laughs> but if you're a pressure uh, cooker lover, I'm really happy and I'm kind of jealous that you can do it. That you have the courage to use these because if one part's not right boom you know <laughs> but anyway I had so much fun on this episode today and I can't wait to chat with you again on episode three season two and I will see you next time